And our last but absolutely not least talk this evening um, from Sergei and Vlad from Rista, who are, as I said, talking about streaming telemetry part two, the return of telemetry or something. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Sergei. This is Vlad. He's hiding in the dark. Um, so it's actually telemetry part two strikes back and we would like to continue our conversation which we started on INOB back a couple of months ago and to continue to advocate for streaming telemetry. And today um, we just wanted to remind about the challenges which we discussed back there. And one of those is that our network devices became physically much bigger than before because if only a couple of years ago, okay, maybe 10 years ago, we had routers which we were able to process our layer tree traffic through only a couple of interfaces available. And nowadays we have switches, modular switches with hundreds of interfaces processing the same layer tree traffic in even bigger amounts. And it is basically doesn't make too much sense to pull information about particular data, which doesn't change too often. But if you're not pulled too often enough, you can miss a spike or an event. So if you add to that equation that those big devices are actually running heavy features on top, such as routing protocols, and are the particular circumstances can start to update their routing table with updates from a couple or maybe all of their neighbors, and you still debugging the device, you can put the processing of traffic under the thread because you put in CPU on the edge. So this is two main issues. And the one which is actually goes along is nowadays the focus is on automation from uh, fast provisioning of the device then we go to fast fall isolation, remediation, performance management. And don't forget that those big providers now are going for traffic engineering. Well, no, again. So traditional reactive approach probably will not scale, probably will not work well enough. And as I said, we continue to advocate for reactive approach of streaming um, and we can stream the parameters and system parameters toward the controller or towards our monitoring server. And I'm just wondering how many people in this audience were attending INOCB. Can you raise a hand, please? Uh, it's a good numbers, so good return. And I have um, a small a uh, question about how do you think if you will search for streaming telemetry on Google, um, how many search results you will get on the first page? I mentioned in open config. And can you guess? Maybe <laughs> some numbers, three, four? No. Nope. Um, okay, so it's actually four. And it's a data from a week ago, maybe it's more from, but um, open config is another alternative because we were covering our uh, agent um, called Terminator. And uh, we also understand that our customers and um, those who are not our customers actually running more than one vendor in their network and it will be good to have something which will be able to support all of the vendors with streaming telemetry and open config actually will provide you with a little bit more than the, just this so um, I actually already answered to my question but terminator is the end is the answer for one of the question which I wanted to give a price for, but we can <laughs> later on uh, to, to catch up. So if we return to alternatives, open config should provide us with also ability to access the complete 
state of a system and not all, only by polling but subscribe to its state you will also be able to probably gracefully uh, throttle the performance in case of overload because we don't want to have your system to be down due to the monitoring and it will also provide you open and standard transport and also a data models because as we said we, we run more than one vendor um, it would be also good and actually open config does it to provide you with an ability to manage the entire configuration of the switch and it's just based on availability of models but uh, here is the thing the cost of streaming everything and it, it, it's actually going with the cost it's it, because it is a tension between having everything be standardized and every and having access to it right now when you need it because we know that different vendors run uh, their efforts to provide models in different time and uh, it would be ideal to have multiple solutions which would support your current goals and our recommendation would be with respect of forista in this uh, conversation to run terminator for all the raw state and run open config for vendor independent state where you have models and um, of course there is a small star underneath because if you trying to monitor system which runs let's say bgp with target for performance of tens of millions of routes and at the same time with very high uh, change change rate let's say thousand changes per second we still would advocate to use bmp for that purpose and basically what's open config open config is a working group of operators it's not vendors they try to resolve um, a modern model standardization log jam it don't let the name to fool you because open config not tell as i mentioned before not only allows you to configure a device but also access the system uh, the state of the system and just uh, silly question which i didn't get an answer can you have a second guess okay we have a first winner <laughs> could you please <laughs> yep it's here so um let's talk about a bit about the coverage we have in terms of data models um the at this point we have quite good coverage across the configuration space with additions marked in red added in 2017. The focus is on things which are operationally useful and the model will never be created unless there is a good use case in production. So you, you can basically look and see how it will change over the year of 2018 and they hopefully the most vendors will be um, up to speed with uh, newly created models and those models are written in young young is a generic language for defining state of the system it's basically standardized effort to provide uh, interoperability between all of the vendors and here is an example of just a basic BGP neighbor Yang model, which consists of Yang types. You can read more about it, uh, such as leaves, container, list, configuration, and states on uh, GitHub or directly uh, on um, OpenConfig website. And as we discussed at the beginning, um, the goal of alternative proactive approach is to provide us first of all with access to all of the state and you can do it with open config young models and us models which you can access through terminator you should be able to pro uh, to get full device configuration management via open config and where you still don't have it you still will probably need to configure it through cli 
it will be supported across all devices in your network uh, since you use a couple of vendors which probably go um, up to speed with open config models and shouldn't be a problem i believe so and because both open config and terminator uses the same uh, open source interface grpc which stands for google remote procedure calls it is uh, basically a transport protocol which defines um, open conf by defined by open config working group and uh, it based on http version 2 and similar to json based rpc this uh, transport is very efficient with respect to data encoding because uh, the goal was to get away from uh, such things like XML because it's 2018, we can do better than this. And uh, the next small question from my side, can you guess or maybe you know what number, what port number is not used by default to configure gRPC? Interface on vendors A, C, and J. Four. <laughs> Number four. Who was it? <laughs> okay, so it's a default value, so don't judge. Um, okay, so open. Config will be able to provide you with uh, ability to still fetch the data as you do it with uh, standard commodity tools like SNMP. You can subscribe to a stream, which is in um, opinion of some people are actually better because you don't need to fetch the data which didn't change. You don't need to store it again. And the third part is that you can, can change the configuration. And here is an example of uh, how you can change standard BGP configuration without any um, fancy stuff. And last but not the least, uh, network operators and engineers are writing automation and we heard about it today from, from both presenters. And uh, it's, it looks like that People who write in automation then don't really care about modeling language because it's it's fair point because the main point of is to care about the code artifacts which will provide you with the configuration. So young models at the same time are absolutely fundamental of uh, in terms of working with vendor interpretation. So there is a tool chain in Python and Go which help you with modeling validation and it's called PyYoung and GoYoung. I hope you will find it interesting to read about it more. And another question from my side, which authority developed Yang modeling language? That's right. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, so uh, on this stage, I will pass down the chair to Vlad, who will demonstrate some geekiness. Sorry. Uh, I am very disappointed it wasn't the fourth option. <laughs> Do you know what is it? <laughs> so, uh, while I log into the switch, um, I'm going to show you an example of how you can take advantage of the streaming part of uh, string telemetry. Um, in your automation workflow. So I will take a small example as, you know, if you want to write a program to make sure that all the, all the interfaces of a switch which are in admin up will have an IP configure from an IP database. I mean, it's gonna be just a toy example, but um, I'll use it to highlight some concepts that you'll come across if you try to use uh, string telemetry and take advantage of that actually. Um, if you, you wouldn't have string telemetry, so if you would just have like, you know, SSH or some REST API or, you know, even open config because it supports get option, which will give you the, the snapshot of, uh, of a sub of a Yang subtree. Um, how would you go about that? So you'll probably, you know, get all the interfaces, uh, figure which one of them are actually not mean up, 
and then um, take all their IP addresses, see if they are from the database. If not, send a configuration um, to change it to the corresponding um, IP from your database. Right, that is, um, that's like pretty, pretty simple to do. But at the same time, you have to, um, you know, be careful because sometimes while you configure the interface, um, let's say if you have to do something more than just configure any, an IP address, something that might take longer, then the interface might go in admin down while you're, you know, on your fourth or fifth step of your configuration. So then between each step, you need to make sure that all your precondition are still holding true. And, um, you know, that can get like pretty complicated very quickly. And, and the other thing is that, you know, uh, you would have to repeat this process of, you know, getting the interfaces, get their state, like, you know, at every, I don't know, 30 seconds, one minute or whatever you want. So using stream telemetry, we can go actually, um, we can use a reactive model. So where we subscribe to the state of the interfaces and when they become, when they change their state, we react to that. So, you know, if they go into admin up, then, uh, you know, we'll see what, inter what uh, IP address they have configured, is the right one, do we need to configure something else? And we'll model that just in terms of notifications we get from OpenConfig. Now, the complication with that is these notifications are not always at the granularity level that we want. For instance, if you configure IP address, you have just one command for that in the CLI, right? The IP address, the IP address and the mask. However, um, in uh, OpenConfig, you would have two separate entities, two separate paths for that. So one for the IP address and one for the prefix length. And you would receive them in any order and with any delay between them. So you cannot really read the whole thing at once. Um, and it's the same with the state and the same with pretty much everything. So how do we deal with that? So we're gonna see that, uh, that in a minute. Uh, we're gonna introduce the concept of state machines to actually uh, figure out what we need to do next uh, at when we receive one notification. So to get some things out of the way, um, I have a Go program uh, to do it. So I'll put it on GitHub. Um, you don't have to know a lot of, of Go. So if you're familiar with any programming language, I kept it simple, just you know, functions and structs, so no fancy language features. Um, so not, none of that is needed. So to go a bit through the code. So at the beginning, we just set, um, you know, the flags and things like that. Then we initialize our IP database, which is just a simple fake thing. And then we connect. So this block here, um, that's where we connect to, um, to the open config um, agent on the switch. And then we start our subscription. So we're subscribing to two paths. So basically, as you see here in split paths, um, admin, status path, and IPv4 address path. So these are two young paths. One is, one is gonna give us the admin status of the interface and the other one, the IP address and the prefix length. Um, and then we're gonna use channels. So people who are not familiar with Go, channels are pretty much like shell pipes. One thread writes to them, the other one reads whatever the other thread wrote. So uh, subscribe is gonna run in a different thread and as it receives messages from OpenConfig uh, uh, daemon on the switch, it will send us through this pipe, um, the messages, and we're gonna deal with them in an event loop. So um, then we have, we're gonna have a helper here, which is again, part of the open config part of the program. And this is basically setting, uh, it's making a request to, to this path here, to the open config, IPv4 uh, config path, and um, it's gonna just configure the IP and the prefix length. Um, so now the meat of, I mean, the main part of the program is this uh, event loop. So if you ever did like a synchronous programming or this kind of reactive programming, you are already familiar with the event loop. So event loop, just take external events, or in this case, uh, open config messages, um, kind of, you know, unwraps them because they, they have like this kind of protobuf, complicated protobuf structure and we are only looking at, at updates. Um, then we get the path because we have some utility functions because the paths are actually, again, a pretty complicated structure. In a real system, you wouldn't use strings. You would actually use the AST, but you know, this is just a toy, so that's fine. 
So once we have the paths from that, we infer what kind of event we got. And then basically we do that simply by uh, matching some, uh, some regex on the, on the notification path that we receive. So, you know, if you have interface state admin status or state IP or state prefix length, then we generate the corresponding event and with extra information we glean from the path. So like interface name or the prefix. Um, so once we figure out what kind of notification we, we had, uh, we're gonna dispatch it to the right uh, state machine. So for basically, if you see here, this, this dispatch code is actually, again, very simple. And it just looks at the, the event type, finds out which is the uh, state machine for that particular interface and calls the, uh, the handler for that particular event. And yeah, the meat of the thing is in the event handlers. So just to back up a bit. So the, the state machine is basically a device and you know, when I'm saying a device, I'm uh, referring to, uh, you know, the theoretical kind of thing. So in this uh, situation, it's like represented by an object. So of type interface SM, which has the current state of, of the machine, the name prefix land, and then some other fields that we're gonna use uh, later on. And then an interface can be, the state machine can be in one of these stages unknown, which is basically when it's created, then admin down, admin up, or configured once we have all the information and it's either what we are expecting or we send the configuration and we reconcile the, the device with the database. So for each handler, for each event type, we have a, a handler. And, you know, for instance, let's take the example of admin status event handler. So when we get a change in admin status, uh, for that interface, we look whether that was an event up. And then if it was an event up, but we are already in a state later than admin down, we don't do anything because um, this was probably a delayed event or we missed the, the, the um, admin down, because when we have this kind of reactive programming, we might miss sometimes events when we restart or something like that. So um, basically if we are down, if uh, we are not down, then we are gonna bring up, we are gonna move to admin up status. And admin up status um, will just start the timer because the other thing is that the absence of certain things, for instance, you have no IP configured, but you have no way to know that in advance in the, op I mean, you could do a get request and, but you know, assuming we don't want to do that, we're just gonna get a timer. And if we don't receive anything in 20 seconds, it means there is no IP configured on that interface. Um, so the uh, once, so if we go to admin up, but if the configuration is complete, so that means if we have uh, all the information we need for that interface, so we got the, the prefix LAN and the prefix, then we go into configuration state, into, sorry, configure state, uh, which we're gonna talk about it in a minute. On the other side, the, uh, the event can be admin down. So basically whenever we get admin down, we are gonna go to the down state and we're gonna release the IP to the, uh, back to the IP database and stop the timer. Because no matter which state we are in now, we just want to go, um, uh, you know, there's no point going in any further to move to any other state than just going back to admin down. Um, then we have a couple of other event handlers like for pref prefix and prefix LAN. So when we receive one of these parts of the IP configuration, we store it um, in our structure. And then if we are not in admin up, we don't have to do anything because the interface is not up. So we're not gonna proceed. And if the configuration is, com is completed, we just go to the configured state. Um, and that's kind of the same for prefix LAN. And we have two handlers because like I said, we don't know which order we're gonna get these events in or how much delay they're gonna be between them or you know, we, even if you change the IP address, if you only change the IP address, but not a prefix, you will not never get the prefix LAN again because that will stay the same, right? And then we have, when the timer expires, then um, if 
we're not in admin app, we don't do anything because it means the interface went down meanwhile. Um, and we just move, if not, we move to configure state. So in the configure state, we do actually a simple check whether we have all the config. If we don't, it means the interface was not configured. So we're gonna get a new IP address from the IP database and we're gonna proceed to setting it with the helper function I showed you before. We're gonna set, um, you know, program it to the switch. On the other hand, if the configuration uh, was complete, so it means we received the current IP and the prefix length from the switch, what we have to do is to reconcile. So this is another pretty important step when you do automation or any kind of you know, programming, this kind of very slow, big distributed systems like a network control plane, is that you cannot, in many cases, you cannot afford to just nuke things and start from, from scratch. So basically want to see whether what you got from the switch is actually something that is correct from the, from the point of view of the database. So here is a very simple check because our uh, IP database is a very stupid one. So we just look to, uh, to check whether the IP address is assigned and if it's assigned, if it's assigned to this particular interface. Uh, if that is true, that, uh, if it's either unassigned or assigned to the current um, interface, then we don't have to do anything because, um, no, sorry. There are actually two different things here. So if the IP address is unassigned, then uh, we are gonna assign it in the database and say, well, this, uh, IP belongs to this interface, and if it's um, assigned to this to, this, to the same uh, interface, then it means it's a successful reconciliation, and we don't have to do anything. However, if it was uh, assigned but to a different interface, then we need to get a new new address and then program that. And that's why, if you see this reconciliation function returns a string, which will be the IP address, the prefix length, but also a boolean which tells the the state machine where it actually needs to program the switch or not. Um, so these are, these are pretty much the, um, the parts of this simple toy, um, toy system. And the, the good thing about it is that uh, you can react to the events as they come in. And whenever you design your state machine, you can always think whether you have thought of all, all the inputs you can get. So in every handler, you, have, you get to decide, so if I get this event in, in this finite number of states, what will happen? Do I need to move to another state? Do I need to ignore it? Do I need to do something but stay in the same state? And that will give you a much better uh, understanding of your workflow than if you're just trying to implement something uh, in the happy path and think, you know, if you know, I just gonna, you know, send these things and uh, gonna check some precondition or post conditions because you might miss things there because you're just not thinking about them. So that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to say. And, you know, this kind of uh, reactive programming uh, and same machine that we saw here is also like, if you go one layer up on top of this, you can build something like declarative uh, configuration. Uh, because the system ensures that whatever you declare, so for instance, you can have something that declares that, you know, an inter or sw uh, a switch interface needs to have a valid IP from the IP database. And uh, because the system is, re is reactive, you don't have to have the actual, in the configuration, the actual steps. So the system will ensure that whenever interface becomes available, um, it will get a, an IP assigned. So, you know, if you want to be passwords compliant, you can say intent driven networking. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. And, you know, as, a, as another anecdote, a lot of the EOS code, so the, the operating system for ISO switches is written in this fashion. So we have a lot of like individual um, programs on the switch and they all talk to each other with something kind of like open config and um, they react to each other's state change um, that's propagated between them. So it's a very powerful programming paradigm, I think. So that's all for me. If you have questions, both for me and for uh, Sergey, we'll be happy to. I'm sorry, I'm a few minutes over, so. All right.
Thank you.